Hello, it's Moss here, and I wanted to talk to you about one of the mythological races of Ireland, the Tuatha Dé Danann. Um, I'm up here on a mountain called Uncruachan between Killarney and Ballyvorney, and the reason I chose here to uh, talk about the Tuatha Dé Danann is because there is a lovely view of on Dachiach Danann behind me, which are a pair of hills um, called Andachiach Danann, which means the two breasts of Danu. Quite racy, I know, but uh, Irish mythology is nothing if not racy. Um, and the Danu in the name of the hills is the same as the Danu that is actually in the name Tua De Danann. Tua De Danann means people of the goddess Danu. So, first of all, who was this Danu? We don't really know. There aren't stories about her in particular. All we have are place names and uh, the, the, the name of the gods themselves. She seems to have been a powerful, possibly nature goddess. Uh, the fact that um, some elements in the landscape um, which look like goddesses are named for her uh, would lead us to believe this. Uh, so the two of the Danum themselves. Uh, so the ancient manuscripts tell us that they were the fifth race of invaders into Ireland. You have to understand that Ireland um, doesn't have a creation story as such. What it has instead are waves of invaders that come one after the other into the country. It seems like the country was always considered to have been existing. Um, the two of the Danum were the fifth and uh, when they arrived here there was an existing uh, population called the Fair Bullock who had uh, in turn come uh, some time before them. Now the two of the Danann and the Fir Bullock uh, fight it out at the first battle of Moy Tirith. Moy Tirith is a place name and the two of the Danann win and the Fir Bullock decide or agree that they're going to spend um, the rest of their existence in the, the uh, province of Connacht. Um, that's all fine and well and good but um, the two of the Danann elect a person called Bresh to be their king. Now, uh, Bresh is an interesting character because his mother is of the two of the Danann, but his father is of another race called the Favori. Now, the Favorians uh, were, seem to have been a primal, chaotic race. Uh, they're never depicted as having invaded, but they are often depicted as having trouble with the invaders and having battles with the invaders. They're usually described as a chaotic um, race, uh, deformed, um, ugly, misshapen, uh, although um, Bresh's father is uh, depicted as being a, an incredibly handsome man uh, and able to seduce one of the, the two of the Danans. So it's a bit ambiguous uh, whether or not they're always ugly. Uh, certainly in the case of Bresh's father he wasn't. However, the Fomorian um, attitude shines true and Bresh uh, is a terrible king and the two of the Danan rise up against him and they expel him. Now Bresh goes to his Fomorian relatives uh, who are living on islands off the coast of Ireland and seeks help and he gets help and a Fomorian invasion force uh, is getting ready to come to Ireland and while that is happening uh, a young member of the Tuatheran called Lou uh, introduces himself to the group um, comes of age and uh, reveals himself to be the ultimately skilled uh, warrior um, person, everything. He's, he's good at everything we, we see in the stories and he's called Lu La Vada um, of the long hand uh, which is meant to indicate his, his prowess at, at every kind of art. Uh, he becomes king of the Tuatha Dé Danann and he leads them in battle against the Fomorians and he personally kills Balor in single combat with a sling, uh, very reminiscent of David, uh, but he kills Balor with a sling and the uh, two of the Danann rout the Fomorians and they win uh, what is known as the second battle of Moy Tirith. This happens in a different place to the first battle even though they're called uh, the same thing, Moy Tirith being the same place name in uh, both areas. Uh, the first battle happened in Kong in Connacht and the second battle happened up near Loch Arrow in um, Connacht as well up near Sligo. Moy Tirith itself seems to mean the plain of the standing stones or the pillars uh, meant to indicate the, uh, the pillars that were erected to commemorate the dead after the battle. So there are many stories about the uh, Tua de Danann, uh, about individual characters in the Tua de Danann um, and uh, very many of our most romantic tales um, uh, feature the Tua de Danann. Um, so what happens to the Tua de Danann? Well, uh, another wave of invaders come to Ireland and this time it is the Milesians. The Milesians are generally um, recognised as being the Celts. Um, now, 
whether or not there was a Celtic invasion of Ireland uh, is open to debate. Uh, whether or not the Celts as we recognise them in Ireland uh, are the same as the Celts as are generally recognised on the continent, I think is open for debate, renewed debate these days. Uh, really, um, we're talking uh, the, the two different types of evidence uh, on the continent. We're talking very much uh, archaeological evidence and artefacts um, which seem to point towards uh, the Celts Whereas in Ireland, it's very much linguistic evidence that points towards the Celts and there does seem to be a disconnect between the two of them. Uh, however, uh, in um, kind of um, popular understanding um, and even uh, perhaps academic understanding, uh, to a point, the, uh, the Milesians are associated with uh, a wave of Celts that came to Ireland and these are also associated with the current population of Ireland. So uh, we, the current population of Ireland, were the last wave of invaders into Ireland. We defeat the two of the Danon and uh, rather than um, banish them from the country, uh, a deal is struck with the Tuatha Dé Danann where uh, the Milesians take Ireland above the ground and the Tuatha Dé Danann take Ireland below the ground. Below the ground meaning that they have a realm that can only be accessed through certain portals in the landscape and those portals are generally associated with um, hills, especially hills with megalithic tombs on them um, because even the, the, the Celts recognised that these tombs were incredibly ancient here long before they ever arrived here and so they would have been associated with pre-existing uh, mysterious and magical races. So one of these portals is behind me, of course, the, the twin megalithic tombs on uh, the on Dachiach. Uh, there are others scattered around the country and many of the tales associated with the Tuatha Dé Danann um, are situated uh, surrounding these, these portals, uh, either mortal men visiting uh, the world of the Tuatha Dé Danann through those portals or the, um, the castles or, or um, fortresses of Tuatha Dé Danann kings and queens being located at these portals as well and of course there are many many uh, modern folk tales which are about um, mortal people um, somehow finding themselves being transported to a, a magical world through these portals as well which seems to be a, a, a an echo of, of this type of tale as well. So that's what the ancient manuscripts say but what, what do we think of the Tuatha Dé Danann themselves? Um, it's generally thought that the Tuatha Dé Danann were any humorized race of um, deities, that they were in fact um, the, 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 the pantheon of uh, a people that, that were in Ireland uh, pre-Christian times and that uh, it was Christian scribes that were writing about them and they couldn't overtly talk about the gods and the goddesses. Um, so they instead turned them into magical humans. So the Tuatha Dé Danann tales tend to be filled with magic. And um, we can see an awful lot of the traits uh, of members of the Tuatha Dé Danann uh, do tend to be traits that would asso be associated with um, gods and goddesses. Um, some of the Tuatha Dé Danann, um, Lu, um, who was the king of the Tuatha Dé Danann during the Second Battle of Moy Tirith, uh, he's very much associated with uh, Apollo, actually, um, on the continent. Uh, he tends to be a god of prowess in all things. Uh, he's got place names named after him on the continent. The, the French city of Lyon seems to be named after Lou. Um, and he has cognates, uh, in other words, um, the same name with the uh, appropriate changes made to it to account for different sound laws in different languages uh, appearing in, um, in Welsh mythology as well. Um, we have uh, Brigid or Breathe as she is known now who seems to be one of the eminent goddesses of uh, the Tuatha Dé Danann. Um, she still has a feast day now. She, she was christianized into Saint Bridget and her feast day is uh, on the 1st of February. So we also have Ogma uh, who was a champion of the Tuatha and also seems to have been a god of eloquence. He invented the Ohm uh, writing system, which is the earliest writing system we have in Ireland, uh, used between the 4th and the 6th century to uh, carve inscriptions on stone. And interestingly enough, uh, it seems that the god of eloquence on the continent, the Celtic god of eloquence, was called Ogmios. Now, uh, one argument against there being a, a connection between the two is that it's very difficult to go from Ogmios to Ogma given the sound change laws as we currently understand them that got us the Irish language from a 
common Celtic language. Um, so despite them sounding similar to uh, the ear, in fact, um, there is no direct route from Ogmios to Ogma, but it still sounds like too much of a coincidence um, to be believable that they aren't related in some way, shape or form. Uh, as well as Ogmios, we have Undagda, uh, whose name actually means the great god or the good god. And um, he must have been, uh, if, if, if you're naming your god the, the great god, uh, it's it's pretty good chance that this was one of the, the bigger gods, the more important gods. Although uh, it seems that uh, his status had diminished even by the time the manuscripts were being written because he's very often portrayed as kind of a, a buffoon character in um, the tales, um, not dressed properly, um, you know, physically um, uh, funny looking, um, doing very lewd and weird things in, in the tales. Um, so his, his status has de definitely diminished from being a good god. And uh, then we have some uh, darker gods like the Morrigan, uh, who seems to have been a war goddess. And uh, the Morrigan, uh, Macha and um, uh, Balav were a, a, a triplet. Uh, the triplets often appear in Celtic um, uh, tales and Celtic goddesses often appear as triplets. But uh, she's a goddess who appears often, uh, always heralding war, always with um, uh, gore and blood. And um, she appears in some of the Ruriacht, the Ulster tales, um, to, to, to interfere with Cú Chulainn while he's defending Ulster. Um, some of the other um, gods appear also in the later tales. So, for example, Angus, uh, who, uh, who's Sheath. Uh, Sheath is the, um, the, the dwelling place of the god. Uh, the Sheath was at Bruna Boyne or Newgrange, so really, really important place. Um, he appears in the Fenian tales. He's a, a, a major character in the Fenian tales, and um, he helps uh, Diarmid Dina and Grania when they are trying to escape from Fionn Macool. Um, we also have um, Lou, uh, again appearing to Cú Chulainn and helping him defend Ulster against the armies of Ireland during the epic Anton Bo Cúlainne or the Cattle Raid of Cooley. Generally the ancient tales of Ireland are split into categories or cycles. Uh, you have the mythological cycle, you have the Ulster cycle, you have the Fenian cycle and then you have the um, historical or the, the kingly cycle. And the Tuithe Danann and the tales regarding Tuithe Danann make up the mythological cycle. And it's said that each, each cycle has its own characteristic for how the, um, the protagonists deal with problems. So the Fenian cycle, uh, generally Fionn and his companions, companions, they use guile and they use cunning and they use intelligence, very much like uh, Odysseus perhaps, when they're trying to solve problems. The Ulster cycle is all about physical strength. There's violence, there's war, there's contention, and uh, that's how they tend to solve their problems. It's said that in the mythological cycle, there's magic. The, uh, every tale involves magic. There are magicians, there are um, sorceresses, um, usually wands of power that are used uh, in order to effect change in the tale and that the mythological cycle, uh, as well as having aspects of mythology and everything you'd expect from mythology, um, tends to rely very heavily on magical powers in order to push stories forward. So what are some of the stories associated with the two of the Danann? Um, there's too many of them to mention in a video like this. I might be able to do videos on individual ones or, or groups of them, but some of them worth mentioning here are um, the Children of Lear, uh, an incredibly famous story uh, about a group of children that are turned into swans by a jealous stepmother and forced to travel around Ireland. Um, for hundreds of years in that shape. Uh, Lear, in this example, uh, can also be found in the name Mananon Mac Lear, who is the Irish sea god. So Mananon Mac Lear means Mananon son of Lear. So apparently uh, this Lear had uh, more children that are involved in this particular story. Uh, we also have the wooing of Aideen, uh, another uh, story that involves a, a jealous woman um, uh, 
transforming a protagonist. This time, uh, poor Aideen is transformed into a, a fly, a bejeweled fly, believe it or not, and forced again to travel Ireland for hundreds of years. And uh, this story actually has um, tendrils into a lot of other stories uh, in both the mythological cycle and in other cycles. Um, we have uh, little snippets about uh, various people in some of the bigger tales, like Dean Kecht, who is the god of healing, um, and he's the person who fashions a silver arm for the king Nuadu, when Nuadu loses his arm in the first battle of Moy Tirth. However, um, Dean Kecht uh, is a kind of an ambiguous character because he kills his own son in a fit of jealousy because his son is able to fashion a better arm for Nuadu than Dean Kecht was able to. Uh, this seems to be a common component in um, a lot of the, the myths and legends of the Celts. Uh, main characters uh, seem to be uh, uh, have a dark and a good side, let's put it like that. Uh, Dean Kecht uh, being one of them. Later on, we'll meet Fionn McCool from the Fenian Cycle, who in the vast majority of tales is the, the hero um, and saves the day. Uh, and uh, we are meant to um, relate to him. But in one of the most famous tales, uh, the tale of Diomen and Grania, he is actually the villain in that particular tale and doesn't come out well or looking well out of it at the end of it at all. Um, Lou has a similar uh, thing going on with the tale of the sons of Turin. The sons of Turin actually kill Lou's father and Lou uh, being so enraged sends them on a series of quests uh, which they heroically um, complete but eventually meet their doom and again it's difficult to see uh, if we're meant to uh, relate to Lou or if we're meant to relate to the Sons of Children in this particular tale. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, very short introduction to the Tua de Danon. There's much much more to say. Uh, I also hope that you enjoyed the scenery around here uh, between Cork and Kerry. Uh, it was a particularly beautiful day I have to say I was uh, very lucky with the weather and uh, I'll talk to you in the next video. So behind me you can see the mountain where I made that video. It's called An Khan, and that means the small heap. A Kruach is a heap and on on the end of a word in the old tongue means small. It's a diminutive. Um, if that's the small heap I'd hate to see where the big heap is because that, that's a big enough heap to me. Uh, the hill that I'm standing on now is called Binan Moor and uh, that's composed of three different elements. Bion or Bin, which means a peak, and then On again, which means small, so Binon means the small peak, and then Moor, believe it or not, means big. So it actually means in English, the big small peak, which means that around the place there must be a Binon Biog, the small, small peak as well, to differentiate it from on Binon Moor. Or maybe it just doesn't make sense. They probably had their reasons. If you like this video, please click subscribe below and you'll be sure to get more of them. Leave your comments um, for any suggestions for future topics uh, that you'd like to see and uh, we'll see you again next time.